Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Swalipop and today is a beautiful day because Trek has just released the brand new fully redesigned Trek Roscoe lineup for 2022. In this video I'm going to be talking about all of the main updates to these bikes from last year and then I'll cover all of the similarities and differences between the four bikes in the lineup so you can figure out which bike is the best for you and for your budget. And as always, I will be covering all of the specific components like the frame, the suspension fork, the drivetrains, and the drivetrain components like the cassettes and derailers to give you a very in-depth yet clear comparison. And at the end, I'll show these tables I made to highlight every single change in one place, and I'll talk about which bike is the best for a specific rider, and of course which one is my overall favorite. Now typically I would make a comparison between the 2021 and 2022 models first to show you what has been updated for each bike, but so much has changed on these bikes that I feel like I had to jump right into this comparison and just explain all of the updates here. So let's get into it by first talking about what these bikes are intended for and discuss some of the biggest changes from last year. The Trek Roscoe lineup has always been a mountain biking focused lineup that is more about having a fun and playful ride on the trail and was thus designed as a more downhill focused bike over a cross country and efficiency focused bike. In the past they've usually come with 27 and a half inch diameter wheels with plus size tires but this year Trek switched it up and made the Roscoe lineup much more trail ready with 29 inch wheels on most of the new models that will roll faster and go over bumps easier. The Roscoe's of the past also used 120mm of suspension travel in their forks, while most of the new bikes now use 140mm of travel. Now before I begin discussing each of the components, I do want to mention that there is a 2022 Roscoe 6 as well, but it is the same bike as last year except for a color change, and that means it still uses the old Roscoe frame and 27.5 inch wheels. I will still include this bike in the comparison since Trek is still selling it, and that'll also help you see what the differences from last year are more clearly. But let's dive into the actual comparison. Typically I would talk about all of the components that are shared between the four bikes first, but actually not a single component on these bikes is shared among all four, so we're going to get straight into the differences, but since I don't want to make this video too long, I won't cover some of the smaller components like the hubs, the seat, the grips, the chain, and the bottom bracket in more detail, though I will still add those changes in the tables at the end, and actually right now I'll also mention that all of the bottom brackets are threaded. Okay, so the first difference we got to talk about is the price. The 2022 Roscoe 6 is priced at $1,150 US dollars currently, while the Roscoe 7 increases to $1,700. Then the Roscoe 8 goes up to $2,300, and the new Roscoe 9 is $2,700. And now let's talk about a fun difference, which is the color. So the Trek Roscoe 6 for 2022 comes in the colors Purple Flip with Trek Black Accents, as well as lithium gray with cobra blood accents, and a new color for 2022 which is olive gray with waterloo blue accents. And then the Roscoe 7 comes in three colors, which are teal with trek black accents, Miami green with trek black accents, and matte trek black. The Roscoe 8 comes in two colors, which are Mulsanne blue, and matte black olive. And lastly, the Roscoe 9 comes in only one color in the United States, which is matte quicksand to an olive fade with black accents. For the components, we have to go over the frames first. So all the frames still use Trek's Alpha Gold Aluminum, which has smooth welds and is pretty strong, and they all have tapered head tubes for added strength, and internal cable routing. The Roscoe 6 uses the same frame as last year, which has boost 141 spacing in the rear and a quick release axle, mounts for a kickstand and a rear rack, and is actually the same frame that the Excalibur bikes use, but it has different geometry numbers due to the wheel size and suspension fork travel. The other 2022 Trek Roscoe's have received a completely updated and redesigned frame, which now has no mounts for a kickstand or for a rear rack, but it does have boost 148 spacing for added strength, and it uses through axles in the front and the rear for even more stiffness and strength. 
This new frame also has ISCG mounts for adding chain and bash guards, and rubber down tube and chain stay protectors. In terms of sizes, the old Roscoe's and the new Roscoe 6 all come in sizes extra small to extra extra large, while the new Roscoe's come in sizes extra small to extra large, with the exception of the Roscoe 9 which does not have an extra small frame size. And for the actual frame geometry, I will show the head tube and seat tube angles right now to give you a good idea of just how much more trail ready this bike is for 2022. The head tube angle has been slackened by around 2.3 degrees, and the seat tube angle has been steepened by around 3.4 degrees to make this bike much better at descending down rough terrain, but also good enough to climb back uphill. I'll also show all of the frame geometry numbers on the screen right now, starting with the 2021 bikes and then the 2022 bikes if you are interested, so you can go ahead and pause the video right now and take a look. Next we can talk about another nice upgrade for these 2022 models, which is the suspension fork. So the Roscoe 6 is still using the SR Suntour XCM32 fork, which uses a coil spring and has 32mm wide stanchions, and a lockout to make the fork fully rigid. This fork has 120mm of travel in most sizes, but 100mm for the extra small size. The Roscoe 7 now goes to the RockShox Recon Silver RL fork, which also has 32mm wide stanchions and a lockout, but it uses an air spring instead of a coil spring, which just makes the fork lighter in weight and more adjustable for the rider's specific weight. The Recon also has a motion control damper from RockShox for much better damping on the trail, and it has 140mm of travel in all sizes. Then the Roscoe 8 upgrades to the RockShox Recon Gold RL fork, which has the same specifications as the Recon Silver, but it has an even better Debon Air Spring for better efficiency. And lastly, the Roscoe 9 makes a nice upgrade again to the Fox Rhythm 36 fork with 36mm wide stanchions for added strength. Now this is the base model version of the Fox 36 fork, but it is still a great fork that makes the bike very trail ready. And of course the Roscoe 8 and 9 also come with 140mm of travel in all sizes. And now I'm going to move on to the wheel sets as a whole. So the Roscoe 6 for 2022 uses 27.5 inch diameter rims in all sizes, which are the Alex MD35s that are tubeless compatible. This bike also uses the Kenda Havoc 30 TPI tires that are not tubeless ready, but they are 2.8 inches wide. The three new bikes actually use the exact same rims and tires, which are the 29-inch Bontrager Line 30 rims that are tubeless ready, and the Bontrager XR4 Team Issue tires which are also tubeless ready. And for the Roscoe 7, 8, and 9, the extra small frame sized bike does come with 27.5-inch diameter wheels to make it more comfortable for shorter riders. But the Bontrager tires are 120 TPI, so they are much more flexible and forgiving over rough terrain, and are also higher quality tires in general. These are a bit narrower, at 2.6 inches to make the new Roscoe's faster, while still being very capable on the trail. And this is a good time to mention that the 2022 Roscoe 7, 8, and 9 all come tubeless prepared from the factory with sealant installed, so they will be much more resistant to flats and you will be able to run them at lower PSIs for more stability while mountain biking. But now we can discuss some smaller components, starting with the seat post. So all the bikes actually use the same model dropper post, which is the TransX JD dropper, but each bike has different amounts of travel in different sizes for some reason. The Roscoe 6 uses 130mm of travel in larger sizes, but 100mm of travel in the sizes extra small to medium. Then the Roscoe 7 uses 150mm of travel in larger sizes, 130mm for the medium, and 100 for the extra small and small. The Roscoe 8 is a similar story, but it uses 100mm of travel for the medium size as well. Then the Roscoe 9 is the exact same as the Roscoe 7, but it does not have an extra small frame size. Overall, it's nice to have more dropper post travel so you can get the seat more out of the way when you're mountain biking, though I'm not sure why Trek decided to switch it up with the Roscoe 8 and give it less travel in the medium size. For the handlebar differences, the Roscoe 6 uses a Bontrager Alloy 31.8mm diameter handlebar that is 750mm wide in most sizes, while the Roscoe 7 and 8 upgrade to the Bontrager Rhythm Comp handlebar that is lighter in weight and wider at 780mm wide in most sizes, which gives better control over the bike. 
Then the Roscoe 9 upgrades further to the Bontrager line handlebar, which is 35mm in diameter for added strength, and it is still 780mm wide. The stems are very similar, as the Roscoe 6, 7, and 8 all use the same model of stem, but the Roscoe 6 has a 60mm long stem in larger sizes, while the 7 and 8 use a 50mm long stem in most sizes. Then the Roscoe 9 uses a Bontrager Elite stem that is compatible with the 35mm diameter handlebar, and it is also 5mm shorter at 45mm for better control over the bike, as a shorter stem allows you to turn the bike more easily. And now I'll discuss the brakes and the brake rotors. So the Roscoe 6 and 7 actually use the same model brakes, which are the Shimano MT200 hydraulic disc brakes, while the Roscoe 8 upgrades to the Shimano 4 piston hydraulic disc brakes, which have much better stopping power. And then the Roscoe 9 upgrades them even further to the Shimano Dior 4 piston hydraulic brakes, which engage much quicker and have more modulation. The M6100 brake levers also provide quicker brake engagement with the shorter reach design. And then in terms of the rotors, the Roscoe 6 uses Shimano RT26 6-bolt rotors, which are pretty average rotors from Shimano's tourney lineup, and they are 160mm in diameter in the front and the rear for most sizes, though the medium to extra large frame size bikes use a 180mm wide rotor in the front for added stopping power. Then the rotors on the Roscoe 7 are actually center locking rotors, which are easier to take on and off the bike, and are just higher in quality. These ones are 180mm wide in the front and the rear for better stopping power. Then the Roscoe 8 and 9 both use the Shimano RT66 rotors, with a 180mm rear and a 203mm front rotor, giving these bikes a lot of good stopping power. Alright, it's finally time to talk about the biggest difference among these four bikes, which is the drivetrain. So for an overview on the drivetrains first, the Roscoe 6 uses a mainly Shimano Dior M4100 1x10 drivetrain with 10 total speeds, while the Roscoe 7 upgrades to the Shimano Dior M6100 1x12 drivetrain with 12 speeds. Then the Roscoe 8 uses a mainly SRAM NX Eagle 1x12 drivetrain, which is SRAM's version of the Shimano Dior 1x12. And then the Roscoe 9 uses a mixed drivetrain with mainly Shimano SLX and XT parts. For the individual drivetrain components, I'm going to start off by talking about the shifters. So the Roscoe 6 uses the Shimano Dior M4100 shifters for the 10-speed drivetrain, while the 7 uses Dior M6100 shifters which are similar, but just built for the 12-speed drivetrain. The 8 then uses the SRAM NX shifters, and the 9 uses Shimano SLX M7100 shifters, which require less force to engage shifts than the other Shimano shifters. The SRAM shifters are the only ones that allow you to shift up to 5 gears with one stroke when going to an easier gear for climbing. The other three Shimano shifters can only shift 3 gears at a time when going to an easier gear. But then for the rear derailers, the Roscoe 6 uses the Shimano Dior M5120 rear derailleur, which has a clutch mechanism so you can add tension on the chain to prevent chain noise and malfunction. The Roscoe 7 upgrades to the Dior M6100 derailleur, which shifts a bit smoother and quicker, and also has that clutch mechanism. Then the Roscoe 8 actually uses the SRAM GX Eagle rear derailleur, which performs extremely well and is one of the best derailleurs out there right now. And then the Roscoe 9 uses the Shimano counterpart, which is the Dior XT M8100 clutched derailleur. Overall, all of these derailers are very good, and the SRAM versus Shimano differences are mainly up to personal preference. But now let's talk about all of the gears, starting with the front crank set. The Roscoe 6 uses an FSA brand 28 tooth crank set, while the Roscoe 7 goes to the Shimano Dior 30 tooth crank set, and then the 8 uses the 30 tooth SRAM X1 Eagle crank. The Roscoe 9 then uses an E13 brand Helix crank set, and I'll talk about the gear ratios after I discuss the cassettes right now. The Roscoe 6 uses a Shimano Dior 11 to 46 tooth 10 speed cassette, while the 7 upgrades to the wider range 12 speed Dior cassette with 10 to 51 teeth. Then the 8 uses the SRAM NX Eagle cassette with 11 to 50 teeth, so a narrower range than the Roscoe 7, but then the Roscoe 9 brings it back with the Shimano SLX M7100 cassette with 10 to 51 teeth. 
And this cassette is nice because it allows you to shift under load a lot better. So looking at all of these gear ratios, the Roscoe 7 and 8 have the hardest gear for pedaling the fastest and the easiest gear for pedaling uphill. So overall for these drivetrains, the Roscoe 6 has the narrowest range and will not be the best on the trail, but it is still definitely good. It's just that the other drivetrains are even better. The SRAM NX can keep up with the others, but the Shimano drivetrains on the 7 and 9 definitely have the widest range you can get right now, and they will thus make your riding that much easier. And the last difference we have to talk about is the weight of each bike. So the Roscoe 6 in a size medium with inner tubes installed weighs around 33.97 pounds, while the Roscoe 7 for 2022 weighs significantly less at 30.84 pounds with tubeless sealant installed. Then the Roscoe 8 decreases that number further to 29.85 pounds, and the Roscoe 9 is definitely a lighter bike at 28.95 pounds. But we did it! That is it for this lineup. I hope all of you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel. And of course, I'll show all three of those tables right now to display all the changes in one place, including the hubs, grips, and other stuff that I couldn't talk about directly. But in terms of who each of these bikes are best suited for, I'd say that the Roscoe 6 is best for someone who really wants to get into mountain biking on a budget. That bike has a lot of good features like the one by drivetrain, the dropper post, and the wide tires that make it really trail ready and confidence inspiring to new riders, or even to people who want to upgrade from their current hardtail. The Roscoe 7 definitely costs more, but it makes a lot of amazing upgrades, like that 1x12 Shimano Dior drivetrain, the better fork, better wheels, frame, brakes, literally every single component on that bike is better than on the Roscoe 6 by a significant amount. So that's a perfect beginner trail bike that will last you a long time and doesn't require any upgrades. Then for people who want a bit more, there's the Roscoe 8. And for $500 more, you get better brakes and a better fork. And the SRAM NX Eagle drivetrain, which is comparable to the Shimano Dior 1x12 from the Roscoe 7. The 8 is definitely more trail ready, but the Roscoe 9 for $400 more makes a big upgrade to the fork and all of the finishing components like the saddle, handlebar, stem, and gets even better brakes. The drivetrain on this one is definitely the best too, and it is really high end. Now, in my personal opinion, the 2022 Roscoe 7 is the best choice out of all four, since you get the same frame, tires, and rims as the highest end Roscoe, but at a much lower price point, and you still get great all-around components. That's definitely the bike I would choose if I had to pick one of the four, and of course the Roscoe 8 and 9 are better bikes, but I would personally prefer getting the 7 and riding it for a while and then either slowly upgrading parts on it myself or just upgrading to a full suspension mountain bike eventually. But once again, these are just my thoughts. I'm excited to see what you guys think of these bikes in the comments below. So as always, feel free to leave suggestions or questions below and I'll try to get to all of them. But besides that, thank you all so much for watching and remember to keep biking.